Oof. Hi. Welcome back to the third edition of trying this chapter again. Um, because what? Because what's going on? Thank you. It's my new favorite sweater. Dad's here. Glad to be back. There's 11 of us. Where is everybody? I know I'm late, but it was only about three minutes. So, thank you. It's my new favorite sweater. I want to move this closer, but I'm a little worried about spacing today. Hold on. Oh, thank you. I always welcome edits, so that's totally fine. Same. I was doing that last night, too. So you're coming over tonight for board game night, right? Afterward? Hello. Hi. Good to see you. 17. We're at 17. Thank you. Swift Blood's here. Crimson's here. Lady Eve is here. Dad's here. Quantum's here. Good to know. Jen's here. I have no idea what the duck story is. I'm sorry. That's not the story we're reading today, but... If you want to hear a story about necromancers, that's in the books. So, necromancers and vampires only. I don't know shit about ducks. Hi. Yes, tonight we're back on for Mansions of Madness. Yes. So excited for that. Because it's been a while. And I've wanted to, but stuff has gotten in the way, and I, re I can recognize that. So, like, if you don't know what we do here, um, this is book club. I read a book to you, you fall asleep and or enjoy it. I don't know, it's whatever you want to do, really. So, um, and we're going to start that in about 15 minutes. But I wanted to clear something up because we've had complications the past two weeks. One, TikTok was just being ass with delivery it was glitching out every five seconds and so we didn't get through it that week and then we tried again the next week and someone reported me for minor safety i was reading a book also i'm not a minor i'm 32 so whatever um but it's okay i i think we're gonna get through it today um mainly because we have a super special guest uh joining me um you all have met him before he's a great friend and uh if i could just get him in the frame you know that would be really great i can't i can't reach oh thank you so much it's it's bartholomew it's bartholomew he's our good luck charm also, in slightly unrelated news, um... Hey, can I have him? Danky's here. Hey, what's up? <laughs> yeah, I'm getting comfortable, <laughs> <though>. <laughs> Do you like my swerve? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm so happy that he's here. I feel like he's gonna give you the best luck. Yeah, uh, yeah I really do. Yeah, I'm only he's here. To, I'm only luck. here to deliver the message. Yeah, Bartholomew's here. Bartholomew's here. Yeah, so that's all. That's all I'm here for. Says, Bye. <laughs> uh, we've uh, we got the chance to film a little bit today. Not much, but um, we haven't seen each other in a while, and we thought before Nodi's uh, superimposed bedtime because they are a working adult. <laughs> they are a working adult with a very early job that I cannot fathom having. Um, and they ha they have to go to they have to go to bed so they can go to work early. I'm a in the working morning. class citizen. I too am also a working class citizen, and as I've said before, our schedules are mirror opposites. So I work late at night. Nody works during the day. I work weekends. 
Nodi works Monday through Friday, and we never get the chance. You now know a little too to much about my work life. Hang out. <laughs> we never get the chance to hang out. We don't. And actually. so, can I move it um, up? yeah. <gasps> Do, I was trying to get it in frame, but it was hard to do without you in the shot. <laughs> so, like, I was, like, trying to guesstimate. I'm like, yeah, maybe no, about here. No, my head's a little big. <laughs> I got a big face. I got big heads. Hey, yo. Um, so, How but... How work in the way? I agree. Yeah. I haven't been able to film at all. Yeah. I've been uh, trying to negotiate a filming schedule for uh, Johannes, and that's been a little bit difficult. Um... Got my contacts in today, though. Can't see anything with those suckers in. I gotta fix my eyeballs. Oh, man. And they sent me, like, a freebie. Like, a set of, like, gold ones. Ooh. But when I put them in, my eyes are... And they're supposed to be, like, a natural gold. But when I put them in, my eyes are, like, naturally, like, green. And so when I pop them in, it makes them look the color of shit. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's my eyes naturally. <laughs> So I put them in, and I was, like, so disappointed. But they were free, so it's not like I can Wait, be that upset about it. Do you? Will you allow me to name this person's pet raccoon in your life? I don't, I can't, it's been uh -huh. a minute since I've been here. Um, I'm thinking Jason. Oh, name their raccoon. Yeah. I was going to say, I don't have a raccoon. You're a little I'm behind a, the times. I'm the raccoon. Mm. <laughs> I'm like five raccoons in a trench coat, my dude. Didn't you know this? All right. Okay, Jason. Seems like a good raccoon name. Yeah, I feel like that gives him a good, like, solid future. <laughs> good solid future. Yeah, I always think about their futures, you know? Jason's someone... I could be a doctor. He's doing fine. He's gonna do good. He's being a doctor. He's gonna... He's... Woo! Bartholomew hit the mic. Um, oh, no. He's, it's okay. He's out here. It's, it's all right. It's all right. But yeah, no, I'm gonna be five in here today for a little bit. Until I have to slowly but surely abandon you. I'm yeah, so sorry, so, my dude. That's all right. That's <laughs> so all sorry. right. I gotta go. I gotta go do things sometimes. <laughs> no, no, we're not repeating that mistake. What? I thought it was pretty uh, good. Besides, it's all horse content today. So, yeah, you get your boy. I don't right. understand the love I have for this boy. And I'll get you a recap since I know you. You probably don't have a whole lot of time to get caught up, but we lead very li busy lives. I don't know if we've told you. Um, but I'm barely, str I'm barely hanging in there. I'll get everybody a recap, and we're gonna start right where we left off last time, so that we don't have to go through the part of the chapter that everybody's heard. I'm gonna edit that in as audio only for the first half. I already have that part edited. And I have a blooper reel for you guys of me cursing and Pond messing up my recording repeatedly. It's it's pretty great. So you'll get that later, too. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Wait, do I have my fidget? Oh, I do. Do you have your what? Is that a fidget toy? Yeah. All right. It's colorful. Let me right? see that. I love him a lot. There's like every color on there. Listen, listen, I'm just saying I can't look at it at certain times. <laughs> it's overstimulating at some moments. Yeah, no, it, sometimes it actually gives me an anxiety attack. But I love him. <laughs> I love him a lot. But yeah, Nodi's here. We thought that would be a nice surprise for everybody. That's why I didn't tell you. We're going We've back to our roots. Had this plan for like a hot minute. This and, feels uh, like it's been, this fe feels like a year ago, bro. Oh my god, it's been a, it feels like it's been a year ago. It feels like it's been forever. So, no. uh, we're super happy to be here. Yeah. Back to the roots. To oh, yeah. that good Shinkami. Can't report both of us. No, I'm joking. I Don't do that. One of us don't, is coming back. Don't report me. No. I didn't do anything wrong. You didn't. Oh, You're man. Oh, Gray has a fidget cube, too. <gasps> we galaxy, have a galaxy themed. I'll trade. I'll give you. I'll give you. I'll. I'll trade you gay for galaxy, which is also kind of. We both have an iced coffee. Um, I drank water earlier. I can't speak on Nodi's behalf. I had nice coffee. <laughs> Dinky had nice coffee. <laughs> I'm doing my best. You know, that's all anyone can ask of me. That's all you can do, really. Yeah. Um. You did get that water. Good. Good, Crimson. Way to, way to listen. I, way to be better I made than a me. post calling everybody out. 
that was like, y'all need to drink water. <laughs> you should have sent me that. Everybody thinks I, I like don't drink water. I do. I just also drink an almost equal amount of coffee. That's me with Monster Energy drinks. Which were, I was I very sad have, when I came here because I forgot to stop by and get a Monster, but I also don't want to go into a gas station looking like for it. I also coffee. have like half a case of Monster. <laughs> and you just told me this now? It was right there. I didn't know it was Monsters. <laughs> yeah. There's two or three cold ones it's in the fridge, but that's all we could fit in there. Oh, it's. I mean, I got you a nice coffee. I, that's listen, why I gave you that. I know. I do. I appreciated it. It was a very good iced coffee. But I made a promise. I made a promise to Kenny that I would, I would take my ca- caffeine intake down. And so after eight o'clock, I have to. Tell I, my, I have to slap my own wrist. I I feel you. But okay. I am still gonna destroy that coffee. Okay. Acceptable. Because we were busy earlier. Actually. It's a blend of two of the ones that you gave me, Lady Eva, and they're delicious. And I've been legit on this for a hot minute. It's the hazelnut one and then like the the spicy mocha caramel one. And I mix those two together with some oat milk. It's delicious. Thank you for the compliment. Mm -hmm. They love our cosplay. (gasps) Thanks! I love the backhanded compliments. Which Have one? you ever gotten those? Or it's oh, like people come in and they're like, if you are cosplaying MHA, then good you're job. good at it. And I'm like, like oh, at those cool. I always say I'm cosplaying Yu-Gi-Oh. If you had to guess, <laughs> that means it's not good. No, <laughs> like, oh, listen, when my friends comes in and like says, hey, I love your, and then gives the exact opposite cosplay I'm doing, and it's my favorite thing ever. Does I've your... been called Yu-Gi-Oh as this a lot by them, and it's everything to me. They're clicking when I'm pushing them. Huh? They want to know if your buttons click on the side of your fidget cube. <laughs> they do. <laughs> Wait, I hit the one that doesn't. <laughs> yeah, it makes noise. Yeah, no, I've been fuck. I'll be careful with this when you start reading. Slightly I'll satisfying. All right. <laughs> okay. Wait. Wait. Where's the one? Nice. Oh, are those like little twiddly yeah. doos? Twiddle boys. Little twiddle boys. It's like you're unlocking a safe. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're breaking into a bank. It's so relaxing. Hello, nice to have you in here. Hey, Thank yo. you for the compliment. Um, questionable that we're human, but we you are. Know, it's according I, to them, I, we are. I, was, I thought I was five right raccoons in a trench coat. That's I thought what I, I thought that too. very clear. You said that earlier. I, so yeah, I no, I was assuming. being fully honest. I am like, we're, we're all just hanging out right now. <laughs> Except, you know how like kids will be in the trench coat to go see a movie? Just that's me and my five raccoons in a trench coat <laughs> named Jason. That's how that would, that's what makes up my brain cell. Yes. The joystick? I got him! A suction fidget that you can stick on things. Huh. Nodi is more like 27 frogs. What kind what? of frogs? What kind of frogs? My tree frog. Are they a tree frog? Who texted me just now? It was me. <laughs> that didn't magically that would text be an you achievement <laughs> if you managed to do that without even holding your phone. Yeah, no, I've, I'm on my phone <laughs> so much, I've just become bonded. Nope, nope, there's one more. Raccoons in a trench coat, right here. Another Hi. one. Hi, what's up? I actually thought I was the only one there. No, no, we got six all together now, boy. Raccoons in a trench coat convention, like, that has to happen. <laughs> Just a raccoon convention. You all, yeah, you all get together. It's and... called Katsukon. <laughs> Accurate. I'm a tree frog. <laughs> You're a tree frog. The nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. Twenty-seven tree frogs <laughs> in a trench coat. We make up the rainforest cafe. <laughs> you know, I saw the shark from when we went to that aquarium. Mm-hmm. I found him the other day, and I was really? like, "Really, Jeffrey?" I got very Aww. excited. One time we went to the aquarium and we made a bunch of videos and there was like a restaurant in like the aquarium and we ate in the restaurant. And I like and stared down a fish. stared down a fish for five minutes while we were eating. I was asserting my dominance as I ate salmon in front of a salmon. <laughs> <laughs> like that's a, that's a power move, man. I kept like trying to engage him in conversation and <laughs> he kept just staring past me like, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. 
Uh-huh. Yeah, if you break eye contact, you lose. And I was like, are you okay? And then eventually I just sort of like looked to the tank. And, and then I noticed this fish just, just having a moment. One fish that has not really left this area of the tank, like facing outward. And I was like, are you staring down a fish? While you eat fish, and they were like, I'm asserting dominance. <laughs> they gotta know I don't mean, I mean business, man. I was like, all right, hey, did you want to shoot video today, or like what? And then we ended up shooting a video with a little toy shark. That he was my favorite. He was my bestie. <laughs> I just, I loved him, and then I lost him, and then I found him again. It was a love story of me and this toy shark that I named Jeffrey. <laughs> I don't know why, but I always like to name things starting with J. I'm gonna run out of ones and it's just gonna start being some real weird ones like Jackery. <laughs> Jody. Wait, that's an actual name. <laughs> someone sent me a video the other day of like like a shit post on Tumblr of someone being like, I don't really like Q being that far up in the alphabet. It needs to get in the back with the, the uh, with all the other weird goth letters and I was like, "Oh man, I'm a Q." That makes sense. I shouldn't be in front of P and R. I shouldn't be between P and R at all. I need to be in the back with the X's. What letter would I be? <laughs> what letter would I be? Um F. <laughs> I can't say that, but I would no, no, say. No, no, I no, really no. can't. No, 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 no. K. K. I changed my answer. K. Seems like a good letter for you. I yeah, think. it has a lot of meaning in my life. <laughs> <laughs> my Wi-Fi is messed up, too. Fuck is that. the recording going strong? Are we having glitch outs? Are we having I didn't connection have problems? Yet, so. well, okay, well, that's good. Try and rein it in. For the video. Two? I have not named my fidget cube yet, no. You guys have suggestions for it? Do you have a suggestion for my fidget cube, Tosh? What's the vibe? Gay? Well, yeah, no, that's I know. why I bought That's it. why I'm trying that's to think of like, I'm trying to think of a really gay name. I'm not sure. Thank you. Hitoshi. <laughs> what? Shinzo? I could just name it Shinzo if you needed to be gay. Stop. <laughs> Don't name your fidget cube after me. Um, t- Priscilla. Todd. <laughs> what the fuck? The cube is Greg. <laughs> Short for Gregarious. <laughs> oh, no. Gregory. Oh, we Gregory. gotta. We oh, gotta. Are those? We got a, um, <laughs> God, I'm trying to think of the bit, but it was like, G is four, but it doesn't start with a G. We make it something different. Like G, his name is Greg. The G is for fantastic. <laughs> and it doesn't make sense. And it's not supposed to, because it's supposed to be a ship. Because what? I don't know. I missed something. I missed something. I see Charles. Charles. The C is for... <laughs> the C is for fantastic. <laughs> but we're gonna... Who's... If you don't know what we do here, and you're just here for Nodi, um, because let's be honest, who's not here for Nodi? You can't be here for me. Um, I'm here for you. I know you are, because you're a supportive uh, friend, and that's really nice. Um, They're here for you. Sure. Um, At least 11 of them are, but there are almost 30 people in here. (laughs) That is not the normal crowd. So we are way above numbers. We normally are in the beginning, and then people drop off once they realize what this live really is, because it's not us in cosplay shit-talking all night. No, we have an agenda. The agenda is for me not to get distracted by a fidget cube while you read. Yes, sort of. That's a side part of the agenda. The uh, main agenda is to read you a story. Um, 
And if you don't know what story we're reading, you're drastically late, and you might have to go to my YouTube, and you might have to listen to all three previous books. Yes, I said three. And if you stay and listen you're going to, be to the fourth installment of this book with no prior knowledge... It's like going into Kingdom Hearts 3 without playing Kingdom Hearts 1 or 2. What does that say about your character as a person? Yeah, we're looking at you. Yeah, I see you. <laughs> anyway, so you better not stay if you haven't read get the other out. ones. You better get out. No, um, but... We're reading Johannes, the Johannes Cabal series. This is the fourth one called The Brothers Cabal. And it's following Johannes's brother, Horst, who is a vampire. And if you weren't here last time, we ended up having getting the live got taken down halfway through a chapter. So we're going to pick up right where we left off. Because I've tried to read the beginning of the chapter twice now. And right when it gets to the same part, we break. Whenever we hit that parking, let me know so I can be like, no, uh, we're going to, we're going to start from where we left off. <gasps> oh, you cheating the system. Yes. Because I feel like the first part of it it's cursed. is cursed. It affects my curse. People were broaching the subject earlier. Like they were just like that chapter's cursed. And I was like, maybe it's just the lead into the chapter. Maybe if we skip the beginning. We started immediately. Give, <laughs> and I just give you the beginning as a recap, and then I dip into the middle of the chapter, we should be fine. And also, you're here. Wait, I thought Bar- I thought... And also Bartholomew. I thought he, oh, I thought he was a good luck charm. I'm just here. He is, yeah, you're just, just here. Yeah, I was the delivery boy. I delivered the good luck charm. I'm not anything. No, you're just here to make sure that we don't get reported. Look at this face. <laughs> Who's going to report this face? At least three people have. And lied. We're not talking about that right now. We don't talk about breathing. No, 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 no. We don't talk about I knocked on wood. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I knocked on it. I knocked on it. You can't see it. It's off screen, but I knocked on it. So we should be good. Anyway, but yeah, who's going to report this face? I can see why you report, would report this face. I get called scary a lot, and I get put off-putting and mean a lot. Someone thought I was being mean to him today. Sir, you're under arrest for being too handsome. That's not, that's not accurate. You have to take you in. Where's your cuffs? Are you going to read me my rights? What are you doing? <laughs> Put this down. Take this. Thank you. There we go. Thank you. Play with this kaleidoscope. I got you with <laughs> A kaleidoscope? Kaleidoscope. Change of colors. <laughs> it's one of my favorite videos we've ever made together. I know. <laughs> that was so dumb. <laughs> of course I remember you. I have you. broken the live. <laughs> yeah. You had. It was an but, accident. I wasn't in Dinko. But was, was it Dinks or was it all the god names we had to say in that video? Maybe. As Wait, a I wasn't in. Yeah, because I was in Horse. Yeah. Yeah. So it wasn't me. I'm and innocent. Also, uh, they had to sing a bunch of Eldritch gods names. We don't have to do and that. I could in this not one. even pronounce. It was terrible. I'm so sorry for anyone, anyone who I insulted with that. But anyway, we're going to start the chapter right where we left off. And where we left off was Horst, who basically was escaping the castle. He is escaping from Alsager and the Ministerium, and he's trying to get away. He keeps falling in a lake, getting all his clothes wet. Ew. <laughs> he did. He Ugh. ended up falling in the back of a well in a oh, dungeon so that was soggy. filled with corpses. Ew. And he lost his socks. <laughs> and he's really oh, wet. He's super upset okay. about it too. He talks about his outfit every three paragraphs. First of all, me too. But second, <laughs> I would I'd rather lose my socks than have to deal with soggy socks the entire rest of that trip. Uh uh-uh. uh. No, no, no. Cause then they're gonna be in your shoes and they never get dry. You'd have to like hang them somewhere and then you have to vibe for like three hours and then they'd still be a little damp so you'd be uncomfortable and I'm not about that life so I feel for Horst anyway (laughs) Horst is damp and very upset about it (laughs) he keeps encountering zombies and he's trying to get away and in his efforts to get away he falls into a manhole filled with the D society and the spy he let go that used to work undercover for the Ministerium as his maid. And they have a standoff. She vouches for him. And then that's where we left off. 
So right as he lands in this manhole with a bunch of tense people with guns. It's still damp. <laughs> still damp. <laughs> oh, that to be forever known. You have to suffer with this. He's still damp. And uh, <laughs> then, then that's where we left off. It cut off right in the middle of that interaction. Right when it's getting to the good part, in other words. Right before and, he dries off. <laughs> anyway, so that's where we left off. And that's where we're going to pick up. Does anybody have any complaints that I will take seriously? <laughs> they have to be well thought out. You can't just post shit. If anybody has any objections to this plan, Toshi start. Okay. Two. We good. Yes, Tiggy. Yeah. How long is he going to be damp for? Because I'm going to be uncomfortable about it until he's dry. <laughs> I'm going to be very uncomfortable about him being damp. It doesn't directly say. We'll get there. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, he's got bigger problems to worry about at the moment. I don't know. I don't know. Have you ever been damp and in a predicament? <laughs> Have you ever just been damp and stuck? <laughs> it kind of takes priority for a bit. All right. Everyone's saying two. Yeah, that means we're good to go. That's the code. Is two. Okay. Horst looked in the direction from which the unfortunate corpse had first come and saw it was a forerunner, or for walker, or for shambler, a force of perhaps forty more, obviously deployed before the destruction of the bridge, were heading roughly in his direction en route to engage the attackers, and he wondered if they would be as astute in telling living from undead as their scout had been. He decided that the night had been fraught enough without having to battle better than three dozen zombies in a case of mistaken mortality and broke cover, heading off at an angle to try and reach the riverbank on the far side of the next meander about half a mile away. The ground was broken and cluttered with undergrowth, so, given the nocturnal limitations of human senses and the perennial limitations of zombies and all senses, he calculated he would probably make it without interference. His calculations were wrong. It transpired that even his enhanced sight could still be fooled by an artful piece of camouflage, right up until he fell through it and found himself in a dugout shelter surrounded by very tense people with guns. It's not a revenant, a male voice cried to one side. It's a man, not undead. Horst was just beginning to feel relieved when a gun barrel was applied with unseemly force to his temple. He was wondering if he had sufficient strength to be up and out before they could react when the bearer of the gun said, No, he's both. Horst managed a weak smile. Oh, hello, Alicia. Hello, my lord Horst. Of the dead? Oh, God, said another man, younger than the first. That's one of them? It is. The pressure of the muzzle against his skull increased a little, and then it was gone. He's the one who helped me escape. After you shot me, said Horst, twice, which I think was very patient of me. He eyed the circle ranged around him, more than one gun still bearing on him. May I get up, or will that get me shot again? I'd prefer not to be shot again. It's been a really rough evening. Alicia gestured preemptorily with her pistol, a military thirty-eight rather than the discreet semi-automatic she had punctured his lungs with earlier. Get up! Horst clambered to his feet rather more slowly than he had to, but thought that seeming slow might be a good ruse. That said, in mid-clamber, he began to realize that it was not such a charade after all. His reserves were perilously low. He recalled how he had spent the first years of his vampiric existence trapped and with only the footling life forces of insects, spiders, and the very occasional small rodent to survive upon. It had been a hellish time, and his humanity had suffered. He had no desire to see what another enforced bloodfast might do to him. On his feet, he looked at the faces ranged around him, some grim, some frightened. In all of them, he could hear the hearts beat. In all of them, he could sense the blood pulse. In any of them, he could just take what he needed and kill or maim the others so they could not prevent him. I need blood, 
he muttered under his breath. Yes, you're a vampire. I think we know that, said a third man, a hard-faced creature with a military bearing. His pistol hand was down, but the arm was tense to bring it up to bear again quickly. Not quickly enough, thought Horst. He could see the man's Adam's apple over his collar and wondered how good it would feel to punch it hard enough to crumple the cartilage of his windpipe. Step aside, step forward, punch the throat, break his circle, attack from without. He gasped, surprised at the coherence of the idea, the vividity of it, the casual horror of it. He didn't like these thoughts. He didn't like that they were expressed in his own inner voice. Sometimes they were hard to tell apart from his own thoughts. Hard to tell apart and becoming harder. Is he all right? It was the older man, the one who had spoken first after Horst's unexpected entrance through the ceiling. He was bespectacled, bearded, and could not have been more obviously an academic if his trench coat had borne elbow patches. Further conversation was interrupted by a man appearing at the entrance to the dugout, disheveled, bloody, and near hysterical with fear. The mortars have been overrun, he sobbed. They're dead. They're all dead. We have to run. The hard-faced man swore under his breath. It's a washout, he said. We're done here. Maybe done for good. We're running, said the young man. We're making a fighting retreat. It's that or a pointless death in this hellhole. Come on. He made to move towards where the messenger stood shaking, but had not even taken a step when the attack reached them. In a flicker of motion, something furry, inside and out, took down the messenger in a mass of limbs and screams. The society members stopped and stared as they tried to assimilate what had just happened, but for Horst, the moment was already old, and he was already responding. He did not consciously decide to burn the last dregs of Lady Misericord's blood that remained to him. The situation had decided it for him, and he felt them flame inside his body as he accelerated hard past the startled mortals, angled his torso forward, and hit the lycanthrope hard in the ribs, producing a satisfying crack nearby his ear as a couple of them snapped in the target's chest. The two of them rolled away from the lycanthrope's stricken victim, and he was most definitely stricken. Horse could smell the blood, could taste arterial spray in the air, and his hunger flared up in tongues of ice that froze his beleaguered soul. Happily, the subject of his violence seemed to deserve it. As their tumble ended in them rolling apart, both combatants were on their feet in a moment, facing one another and ready to fight. Oh, you're kidding me, said Horst, taken aback and a little underwhelmed. It was hard not to be dismissive. A bloody were-badger? Really? While he appreciated that the European badger is a short-tempered creature and not to be trifled with, encountering a stripy-faced renegade from a brutalist interpretation of the wind in the willows somehow failed to communicate the supernatural menace a werewolf, werebear, or even a were-crocker spaniel might have brought to the occasion. You're aware that by strict definition, a lycanthrope is specifically a werewolf, aren't you? asked Johannes Cabal of his brother. Horst muttered something about the magnificent mutability of language, popular usages replacing dry old meanings, and anyway, by strict definition, weren't necromancers only supposed to be fortune tellers? Johannes conceded the point, and Horst continued. Die, growled the creature in a strangulated croak that did nothing to raise its stock. Die in the name of Lord Devlin! and it rushed Horst, but he danced aside easily. How does anyone ever get to be a were-badger? he inquired with the most polite curiosity. Did your father have some sort of romantic interlude with a very pretty lady badger one night? The badger's eyes widened with fury as it turned to face him again. He did? What a card! I can only imagine how romantic a set is by moonlight. The creature charged again this time making an asthmatic sort of roar as it passed by Horst, who once again dodged. Now, now, no need to be like that. I'm just trying to understand how you ended up being so ridiculous. The first two failed passes had made Horst overconfident, however, and it transpired that being cocky with a were-badger is a tactical error. 
The badger stopped short and swung hard, one heavy claw looming up and out of the shadows so quickly that it caught Horst before he was even aware of it. It cracked into the side of his skull and he was knocked from his feet by the vast violence of the blow, spinning along the length of his body in a graceless pirouette before crashing to the ground by the dying messenger. Horst had felt his cheekbone break under the impact, where once upon a time his first thought would have been, Not the face! Now a need for vengeance arose in him as urgent as hunger. No half-human was going to get the better of him like this. No mongrel thing that could crow and swagger over his defeat, especially not a bastard demi-badger. Before him was the messenger, staring up into the night sky, his throat lying open and awareness leaving his eyes. Already deep in shock, it was obvious he would be dead in a minute or so. Horst watched blood arc in a small fountain from the damaged but not severed carotid artery and felt his fangs extend. No time for that, however. He glanced over the dying man's body and noted the ex-military webbing belt laden with pouches, knife scabbard, and an empty holster. Behind him, he heard the badger lumbering forward. Horst sucked down the pain, not nearly as agonizing as it should have been, of his shattered cheek and moved. He left the ground feet first, thrust back by his arms a moment in the air, and then his feet set down, and he whirled to face his foe, staying low and balanced, his arms outstretched. They sighed through the air, passing close by the were-badger's face. It started to shy away, but then flinched and stopped moving altogether as Horst settled into a combative crouch. Then the badger stepped back, gripping its throat. Horst held up the right hand. It contained the broad-bladed fighting knife he had found in the messenger's belt. There was blood across the first three inches of it, the same blood that was pulsing thickly over the badger's claws. "'I think you're about done for,' said Horst. His voice was harsh and dangerous, and he barely recognized it himself. The badger turned, made to stagger away, but Horst was on it in a second. He drove it to the ground, pushed its arms aside, and jaws agape, fastened himself onto the creature's opened throat." As the D Society members watched in varying degrees of horror and relief, Horst fed on the dying lycanthrope until its heart faltered and failed. When he was finished, he rose and faced the mortals. He could see the fear and the loathing in their eyes. Except for Alicia's, she was unreadable. When she said, Well, that was efficient. He had no idea whether it was a compliment or an irony. Efficient? He looked back at the creature, but it was a monster no longer. The corpse of a man lay there, minding Horst of a young farmer with dark hair cut short and an ill-advised sideburn. I've never killed before, he said. What? It was the brusque tones of the military man. Never? I thought you were supposed to be the Lord of the Dead. Horst turned on him, rage billowing in his chest. I have never killed before. He snarled into the man's face. He was aware his face was covered in blood. He could see his reflection in the man's eyes, and it made him feel good in that moment. Because that was what he was, a bloodthirsty monster. And these little people had better start understanding that. They didn't discuss the job title with me. Horst stepped back, collaring the rage and putting it away for when it might do some good. He was breathing heavily with anger, with exertion, and with the glorious feeling of new blood to burn. He said it once more, quietly. I've never killed before. The older man edged past him and knelt by the messenger. He didn't need to check for life. The wounded carotid was no longer pulsing out blood. Poor Redmond's had it, I'm afraid. The military man muttered a heartfelt oath and then said, Deny him. In response, the older man fumbled at the webbing belt that seemed to be the one piece of standard equipment among their force, and withdrew a small test tube from a pouch. Horst was irresistibly reminded of his brother's proclivity for carrying elements of his laboratory around with him, and as he watched the man remove the tube's cork and sprinkle the contents over the body of the hapless Redmond. It was a crystalline powder, but certainly a mixture, as Horst could see harsh metallic glints within it. 
What's that made of? asked Horst. The man didn't answer, but rose and stepped back as the power as the powder combusted quietly and unspectacularly, like a diffident flambe in a shy restaurant. Horst opened his mouth, then closed it again, as he didn't know what to say about this. He especially didn't know what to say about Red, how Redmond burned away almost silently in strange, cold, golden flames. Poor Redmond, said the older man, putting away the empty tube. At least we've made sure he rests, answered the military man grimly. He looked at Horst a little suspiciously. You don't have many friends, do you? Not around here, Horst admitted. My social skills have seemed to have suffered. He noticed the man's eyes were regarding the corpse of the demi-badger. We seem to be in this together, he said. We'll worry about your motivations later. Come on. He hefted his pistol up to a ready position.